This shoe is 3D printed. I honestly did not know this was even possible until this showed up in the shop, I think last year. It is, I've been wearing it, playing around with it. And so finally I decided to cut it in half today to really see what 3D shoes are about, what's on the inside, how do they structure them, what are some of the pros and cons as we start looking at this new emerging industry in the footwear industry of 3D printing shoes because there's a lot of possibilities this could open up that could completely change the footwear world. Our 25% off least favorite child Father's Day sale is live for all you guys that may have forgotten to get your dad something for Father's Day. You can still get him a nice handmade leather good made by us here at the shop. And we're not gonna get it to you in time for Father's Day because you forgot to order your Father's Day gift. We forgot to do the sale before Father's Day year after year, but that allows you to get 25% off. And the beauty of it is we're gonna send you a little apology letter to uh, apologize to your dad for not you forgetting that you forgot to get him something for Father's Day, but the fact that these are handmade, it takes a while to make. And I thought they'd be here by Father's Day so sorry, dad. And I also got 25% off and I forgot to get it until like day before Father's Day, but he doesn't need to know that. And all of our stuff's 25% off, so check it out below. Give him a nice Clayton wallet, the biggest dad wallet with a nice veg tan leather, our micro adjust belt, our new Swayze wallet, so check it out below. A lot of people think 3D printing has just been around for the last decade or so, but the actual concept of 3D printing was first described by Murray Leinster in his, his 1945 short story, Things Pass By, where he talked about this style of construction using magnetronic plastics to, to make ships and houses and this, this concept of extruding a material to slowly build up a product in layers. Then in 1971, a patent was filed for a liquid metal recorder, which was the first patent describing 3D printing. Then from the 80s to the mid 2000s, the technology never really took off. It just kind of slowed. It wasn't a viable option. It wasn't strong enough. It wasn't fast enough. It wasn't attainable enough. It wasn't, it wasn't affordable enough for a lot of companies. But in 2005, users really started to begin to design and distribute plans for 3D printing because 3D printing finally got to that consumer level where people could afford their own 3D printer and start making their own products and start pushing that industry that was initially conceptualized in the 40s, finally getting into the mainstream in the mid 2000s. But we still didn't really see a a lot of use in large-scale applications until the 2010s when 3D printing really matured enough to consider it a viable option for a lot of different things including uh, my buddy Jay Rig Everything he's shown uh, 3D printing with with concrete to make a stat screw himself and they're using that same concept for buildings they 3D print metal parts that have been AI designed and around this time a lot of companies were experimenting with 3D printing because it looks so much like it's the future including big corporations like Nike Adidas New Balance they really started exploring this 3D 3D printing shoe throughout this era. Because in theory, 3D printing could 3D print an entire shoe without multiple molds and sewing. It has a lot less waste. It's custom fit. You can design exactly what you want, how you want to fit your feet, how you want. And the beauty of it is that you don't need giant factories across the sea. You could conceivably in the future, you could have a 3D printing shoe maker in a kiosk and just print out your own shoes or at a store or even at your own home. But the industry wasn't quite to that point yet, but there was still some brands experimenting with 3D printing like we saw in the Adidas where it was the type of 3D printing where instead of layers, it was pulled out of that vat of liquid that we'll go over later. But none of them really made a full 3D printed shoe that was available at the consumer level. So as we go through this and dissect it, we'll try to figure out why the big brands haven't quite adopted this yet. And one of the barriers to entry for these big brands is the types of 3D printing. There's tons of different styles of 3D printing, but you usually see three predominantly with the stereolithography, I think I said that right, where the liquid polymer hardens as it contacts laser light. That's how the Adidas sneaker was made, where just layer upon layer gets cured as it gets pulled out of this vat of liquid. It just looks like an alien movie. Uh, the next one is selective laser sintering. It's similar to sand casting, but instead of making a mold in the sand and then pouring liquid hot metal into it, the laser and the heat from it fuses the object within the powder itself. And then the third one, and probably the most popular and the one that most people are familiar with and how this shoe is built, is that fused deposition modeling. It's the most common type of 3D printing you see online where it's basically like a, a big spool of the 3D printing material gets fed through a, a heated nozzle and that melts it, extrudes layer upon layer, building up the product. Similar to like if you squoze a toothpaste tube and just start making a little house out of it, but a lot finer and a lot longer of a process. And it 
cures fully to where it was liquid hot material to where now it's a soft, squishy, solidified material. So now you know the general gist of 3D printing and some of the history. What is this shoe? Well, the brand is from Zellerfield. The style is the Magma by Jaron Dorman. They weigh one pound and they are a steep price of 250 bucks and they're made in Germany. And the way it's positioned is get footwear that's 3D printed for your feet, fully recyclable and factory free. Automated printing replaces overseas factories and labor. All footwear is printed to order so there's no excess waste. Old pairs can be returned and fully recycled into new ones. And if you want to pair these, check them out via the link in my description. So now to the big question everyone always has about these is how do they feel? Do they actually feel like sneakers? Do they feel like sandals? Like how do they actually feel underfoot? Well, they're surprisingly squishy. They're really spongy. They're really soft and squishy underfoot. They're super comfortable. And really the only thing comfort wise that's kind of obnoxious is a little bit grippy on your socks. It grabs dirt and grime. Dirt gets stuck in all the pores and it makes makes them really dirty really quick. So they're comfortable enough to be an actual shoe. But some of the flaws inherent to 3D printing a shoe make it a less of a viable option for an everyday shoe, but it's surprisingly comfortable. They're also really breathable. We did the breathability test on it and it passed with flying colors because of all the innumerable holes throughout the whole construction. They're also really, really flexible. You know, there's it's surprisingly rigid in the sole but through a lot of the upper, these thinner parts, it's super, super flexible and it stretches. You can see how those little lattice structures all throughout it don't just snap and break, they're flexible. And because of the squish, we wanted to run the ball drop and bar drop test on it. The ball drop test was number eight overall, bounced up 18 inches. The bar drop test was number two overall, it bounced up nine inches. So clearly very comfortable, responsive, uh, squishy underneath your foot. So all the, all the underfoot attributes are pointing to this being a really viable option for the future if it can be done right. But what about the durability? That's where for me, before I started wearing this and looking at this, it was my number one concern. Well, we did the upper puncture test, which is tough to do on a lattice structure shoe, but it only took 18 pounds. The outsole puncture test though performed surprisingly well. It took 82 pounds to puncture through. That was my number one fear. I, I don't think that it's for sure like, oh, this is just as durable as other outsoles, but it was surprisingly puncture resistant. I just wanted to do a rip test on screen because I didn't want to do this before, but I'm curious if you can even, if you can just rip this apart. Let's see. Oh, I feel like I could. Yeah, probably shouldn't have done that before we finish this video, but you can see there's some durability issues with having a 3D printed shoe because I could just rip it apart. And even in some of these spots where the detail is really delicate and there wasn't assumingly a shelf built up for this to solidify, you can see how the 3D printing was falling off and not curing and not fusing correctly here at the toe and a few of the other spots. And even on the inside, you can see it's it's a little bit of a mess. But what about if you have this next to some fire? Does it just completely melt on your foot like a permanent sock? We put the flame to it and it is not flame resistant at all. Obviously this is extruded material that when it's heated up, melts and so a flame will do that same thing it melts it and it just kind of becomes this uh, goopy material that doesn't ever really fully re-solidify we also put the heat gun to it to see if, how it reacted with a lot of in intense heat without flame no matter how strong a material is if it's really really thin and it's, and it's exposed to really intense heat a lot of times it's going to ruin the structural integrity or melt it and that's exactly the case with this and i thought for sure that before we got these that a 3d printed shoe would be basically the same density all the way through same thicknesses not a lot of uh, multiple durometers and different types of structures. But you can see even before we cut it in half, just from when I ripped it in half, that that cross section is crazy. There's like, it's a perfect square lattice structure all the way through, which makes sense because if you look at it from the side, it looks like there's all these organic lines coming through and sweeping across. But if you look straight down at it like this, there's, it's literally just square cavities all the way through. And what you're seeing here is the cross section of those long cavities. And you can really see that by looking at the cross section of the heel here. So these are basically just modern like clogs or like those old yeah clogs, like the wooden clogs that we've cut apart, where you're taking a piece of wood and there's wood grain running throughout the whole thing. But as you're carving it out, you're exposing some of the wood grain and all the different variation. And there's always gonna be a, a, uh, a direction to the material. Uh, that seems like that's exactly how these are built which is crazy to me because it's it's just a cool concept of like the some of the very first types of shoes that weren't leather, these wooden clogs. You can compare them to the most modern and cutting edge style of construction for footwear and 3D printing and they kind of meet up in the middle. It's pretty cool. So let's cut this thing in half, see how it's structured, how they achieves all these different multiple densities and how they actually made a wearable shoe from 3D printing.
All right, we got it cut in half, and this is just our first look into this. If this is interesting to you guys, and this video does well, I wanna dig a lot deeper into the 3D printed world for footwear, because it really does seem like it's the cutting edge, it's the next thing. So if you like this video, like it, subscribe to the channel, support this however you can, because I really wanna dig deep into this industry and do a little mini series on it. So, let's see what's inside. This is so crazy to me. When, when this was cut in half, I did not expect it to be this intricate all the way through. Because you can see that, that lattice structure, that perfectly square lattice structure through the upper. But the interesting thing is this, this uh, insole almost. It's like, it's like an integrated 3D printed insole because you can see it's a lot finer fiber or lattice structure. The actual filament or the material is extruded really, really finely. And, and so it creates this layer of really soft squish right underneath your foot that then is backed up by a really heavy layer of a of thick extruded material to give it some rigidity so you don't just squish all the way to the ground. And so it really is like an integrated insole. And then underneath you have a basically a 3D printed structured outsole because you've got these columns supporting all the squish underneath because if this was just solid 3D printed material all the way through, it'd be super heavy, it'd be really hard underfoot, you wouldn't have any squish. But because they built in all these columns and all these voids that are structured by that heavier extruded material, you get a really complex squish. And then you also have these solid ridges that support and where all those tear spots would likely be if it wasn't a solid piece of extruded material or a tighter extrusion. I don't even know if that terminology is right. You 3D printing people are gonna be upset at everything that I've said, but I'm learning, it's the first video. But one thing that surprised me is they didn't do that harder, thicker material extrusion through the outsole. It's more of that softer, tighter, smaller lattice structure compared to that harder material. And I don't know why they would do that. It seems maybe it's a little bit more grippy. Maybe, maybe it's harder to lay down a really heavy layer of material on the bottom but it seems like that would be the obvious choice. But this has completely blown me away. I did not think that 3D printed shoes were this far when it comes to design and function and, and, and how it all works together. I really thought it was just gonna be like a single 3D printed, kind of clunky, fragile shoe. When in all reality, you've got multiple density structure, you've got flex, flex points, you've got reinforcements. Cutting this in half really shows me this could be a, a legitimately viable option for footwear in the future. Because if they really refine this to a point, you could scan your feet and have the shoes fit you exactly how you want, adjust the arch support, adjust the drop, adjust the design. You don't have to have a factory in China make them. You could have them extruded in your right in your own home or go to a local store, kind of like a Build-A-Bear, but you like build your own shoes. And the fact that you just need basically one or two pieces of equipment to print a shoe rather than having all the sewing machines, all the casting, all the all the infrastructure in place to actually construct a shoe, it can all be done in one single spot and one single process. But the problem is these take forever to print. These take anywhere from 24 to 40 hours to print. And to put that in comparison, you know, a lot of the sneakers that you see are can be done in under an hour with the whole process. Even some of the heaviest duty boots in the world that the Pacific Northwest makes, we reached out to them to see how long it takes them to make a boot. It's two to three hours. That time seems to be the number one factor preventing this from really becoming mainstream. Because once they can get that down to, imagine if you could print a shoe in like 20 minutes, it would completely change the footwear world. But also you'd have to improve some of these other features that we identified, that the fact that you can just kind of rip it apart, that there's gonna be some weird uh, failings of the 3D printing, it's not gonna be as durable. There's all those other problems that I think will get fixed, but they're not gonna, it's not gonna matter unless they can really cut that time down from 40 hours to an hour. So, so I do think there is a big future for 3D printed shoes, but with this shoe, is this, is this a viable shoe? Can you actually wear a 3D printed shoe? Did they pull it off? Is the industry at a point where if you are wanting a $250 3D printed shoe, does it work? It does, surprisingly. I've, I've, I've worn it around quite a bit. Like I said, it's not gonna be as durable. There's all these things that we talked about, but this works as a shoe. The technology is already at a point where people are going to Zellerfield and making shoes, designing shoes and having them 3D printed in an industry where usually in order to design and make your own shoes, you've got to find a way to work with some of these giant corporations, sell tens of thousands of units to be able to design your own shoe, where this, anybody can make a shoe, which is so cool. And it makes me excited to, to dig into this a little bit more. So let me know what other 3D printed shoes you want me to cut apart, what else you 
you want us to test because the next video we're probably going to go a lot deeper into all the information and a lot more of the science and how it all works to really start figuring out if 3D printing is the future of footwear or if it's just a little bit of a flash in the pan. Is it the laser disc of the, inner, of the shoe world? That's what I want to figure out. But for now, these are technically shoes and they work, which blew me away. So thank you for everything that you guys do and supporting these videos. If you want to see more of the 3D printing world, just be sure to support this because if this video flops, we probably won't do it. But if it does well, we'll do a full series on it. So thank you guys. See ya.